If we were all asked to take a $20 bill or a $1 bill and take the scissors and cut it, probably no one here would have the courage to destroy a beautiful picture of George. <laughs> and yet, we are very prone to take the card and just swipe that whatever we're buying, and it's almost like that's not real money. It's kind of like we're just going to do that. And the average family now is paying $8,000 a year in interest. And this year, Americans will spend $50 billion on interest. And I wonder if we fully understand what we are doing and I think we have to kind of have an extreme money makeover. You know, you watch that program every now and then. Someone is in pretty bad shape. They look uncomely. And they whisk them away somewhere. And they give them a face lift, an eye lift and then rework their teeth, and then the eyes, a little LASIK deal, and then other... <laughs> reconstruction. And then they come out, and they look beautiful. Someone the other day had all these external reconstructive elements completed and they said how do you feel and she said I I really feel fat because they weren't able to touch the heart and the thoughts they were doing the external now credit cards are the external and what we have to do is we have to all have an extreme money makeover. And I want you to open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 2, beginning with verse number 6. Is everybody still here? Amen. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what it is right, what is right, just and fair, and you will find the right way to go. Pick it up right there for wisdom. Read with me. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Now what Solomon is saying is that there is a decision-making level that is not stimulated by emotion. It is not picking up the things at the counter as you're paying the bill, whether it's M&M's or this magazine or that magazine. Most of our advertising is set to stir your immediate reaction, buy it now, buy it now. And what Solomon is saying is there is a heart experience there is a wisdom where your decisions are wise choices that watch over you. We're not called to be people who are in bondage. We are called to be people who are blessed. But if I'm going to be blessed and you're going to be blessed, we have to have a money 
We have, an, have to have an extreme money makeover, and I now have to understand the wisdom of God, that God is going to give me the wisdom to know how to make the right decisions. Someone said, we make decisions, and then decisions make us. And how far you go on the road of blessing is up to you. How much you are able to shed and shred the memories that are still in your mind of, we'll never have enough. I don't deserve that. My family was in poverty. I'll be in poverty. My grandparents were in poverty. And in many cases, poverty is a way of thinking. Poverty is a way of getting in. Is, it is something that you get from the generational background. It is a curse that passes on. And you and I have to understand that God has made available to us the wisdom of God. And not only wisdom, but the Bible says, then you will understand what is right and just and fair, and you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart. Every person here can be under the prosperity of God. You can live a life that is blessed. You don't have to have the poverty of your background. I came out of a pastor's home. I looked around and everyone was economically disabled. I made a choice that I was going to go the way of the wisdom of God and I was going to combine the wisdom with hard work and I was getting out of that. And everyone is called, are you still here, to get out of that poverty. But you're going to have to change your thinking. You're going to have to have wisdom that is entering your heart to such an extent that you believe that God has called you to be a blessing. Now, I don't know what this is. I've been studying all this this week. And on the one hand, I read a book this thick. And they talked about not being materialistic. And, and I agreed with that. But when I was done reading the book, it was like, it was like no faith and, and no belief for anything. I said, okay, we're not going to be materialistic. Now what do we do? And then over here we have some that are so prosperity gospel oriented that when I hear some of the things they do, I believe they leave the pages of Scripture. They're just way out there. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I, I thought to myself, is it possible to really have an understanding of what the Bible says about blessing and not to be materialistic, but not just not to be materialistic, to have faith and belief. And in Proverbs chapter 13, it says, verse 21, misfortune pursues the sinner, but prosperity is the reward of the righteous. And I, I, I really don't plan to fail. I mean, I'm believing, I hope you're with me, I'm believing to be blessed. And I don't want our children to be in poverty, and I don't want them to have lack. I, I want to understand what is biblical and what is right until we can understand the blessing of God and the prosperity of God and that we're living in wisdom. We're walking in wisdom. And I begin to change my mind, and it's not thoughts, I'll never have enough. And God doesn't want to prosper me, and I'm starting my day, and I don't know whether he wants me to win or whether he wants me to lose. And, and some people, they don't think you should have anything. And, and if you have something, you should feel bad if you have something. And if you have something, you probably don't love God. And if you have less, you probably know God more. And then the people that have a lot say, well, probably they're not spiritual if they have less. Yeah. 